Okay, guys, go ahead. Are you going to have your full complement of players there? We are. Uh, we are. We'll find that out today, this afternoon. But we are under the. Uh, we are under the. Uh, what is the word I'm looking for here? Uh, we think we're going to have everybody ready to go when we go to Kentucky. So that's the best way I can say it. We'll get. We hope to get medical clearance this afternoon, but we are anticipating that. that's the word I was looking for. Is Eric McGill the one you're waiting on? No, we're waiting on both Eric and Armand. Armand's still in concussion protocol, so we hope to be cleared of all of that today. Well, Armand said he's been practicing for the last five days, and he had been cleared. Has he not been cleared? He has not been cleared. Armand has been practicing the last five days, but he has not been cleared by the doctor to participate. So I don't know where he got that information, but uh, uh, he'll be cleared today. So, I mean, I'm sorry he quoted you like that, but. We, Armand's not the doctor, nor am I the doctor, so that we have not got a clearance, but hopefully we'll get a clearance today. We get, we're going to get clearance on all of them, guys. They're all going to play, so I'm not trying to play a, a possum here on you, but we have, I have not had a doctor says they're all cleared to play. Who are you going to start? Uh, I don't know yet. No, I take that back. I do know. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that until we get there, until we get in our game notes. What's your impressions of the game last night, watching Kentucky? You know, isn't it amazing? We're all human. I mean, I just got off the uh, uh, the phone with the Kentucky uh, uh, beat writer, and I just said, uh, it just goes to show you, it doesn't matter what level you play at, whether it's junior high, high school, college, pro, uh, everybody has one of those nights, and, and no one's immune to it. So my read on that last night, it was that uh, they had one of those nights. And it was one of those nights for two, two different swings. Duke had one of those nights, and Kentucky had one of those nights. Uh, all I know is when we run out on the floor Friday night in front of 23,500 people, I promise you the guys in the white jerseys will be ready to go. I know that for a fact. So we're going we're gonna to get them at a good moment. What positives stuck out for you from them last night? What did you see them do well? Well, that, it's, it's what they do. You know, it, What Kentucky does well is what they do is, is their length, their length and their athleticism. Uh, you know, they do a great job on the offensive glass, and they do a phenomenal job in transition. And what they do is they really pressure the basketball. I thought there was a huge bang-bang sequence last night in the first half with two really bad uh, calls that went against Kentucky that I thought, but, you know, it's easy when you put it on video, but I thought that had a really major effect. They had just started cutting into it, and they had two bang-bang calls that went against them. And one of the calls was a uh, would have been a, uh, a flagrant, and they would have received the free throws and the ball out of bounds. And that would have been a big, big moment right there. And then the other one was the travel violation on a breakaway layup. So uh, it could have been a different outcome, or not an outcome, but it could have been a different way of swift, of momentum and uh, that I saw. How do you control the pace while, while still trying to take advantage of your, chan your chances in transition? The, the only way you can control pace is to score. But that's it. And uh, that, that's the only way you can do it. And uh, if we go up there and uh, we get you know, in a hole like we have uh, in the past with, uh, with high major teams, you know, it's just hard to get out of. So we need to get off to a good start. Uh, we know there's going to be an unbelievable wave when we start this game. Uh, you know, I, I I've known Coach Calipari since 1985. I can tell you I know exactly what's happening today in that locker room and what's going to happen on that practice floor. And it'd be the same thing that would happen here at SIU. So we know that we're going to have to hit the wave right off the bat, and we're going to have to withstand that push. Are you, is, are you able to take care or take advantage of their inexperience? I. I don't know how much we're going to be able to take advantage of anything at Kentucky. So we're just, you know, guys, the, the, the game plan is pretty simple for us is, uh, you know, we've got to go in there and just do what we've worked on and try to do that and execute that as the best as possible. I mean, we're going in to play the all-time winningest program in college basketball. And I'm trying to keep this game as simple as I can with our players. And I'm trying to keep as the least amount of pressure off of these guys that I can. Because the worst thing we can do sometimes as coaches is add to the heap. And I don't want to add to that. There, there's enough buildup with this thing as it is. And uh, so we're just going to go in there and try. We've put together a game plan. We're going to try to execute it, and we'll see if it works.
almost everybody played yesterday. What advantage do you see in not playing until Friday? I don't see any advantage. We tried to get a game on Tuesday. We couldn't get one. So I, I, I would have I would have preferred to start yesterday as well on starting date, but uh, we didn't we didn't have the luxury. We couldn't find anybody. Uh, our schedule wouldn't allow us. But had we played on Tuesday, we probably wouldn't have been able to play this game either. So it always works out for you. How well, how well has Kavion, you know, learned to shoot over length working with the rakes that you've had? We're going to find out Friday night at 6 o'clock or 7 o'clock their time. I mean, I don't know how to answer that question until we see. Um, it's, it's the best way for us to assimilate because we don't have those guys. We don't have those guys in our league. I mean, there's nobody like Kentucky's length in our league. And we're not going to see anybody like Kentucky's length for the entire rest of the season. We may see one guy, but we won't see we won't see multiple lines of that. So, uh, yeah, I'm old school. Coach Cherry was here the other day at practice, and Coach Cherry laughed, and he said he used to do it with a tennis racket at the, at the, on the end of a stick. So uh, I said, well, we've upgraded. We went to wingspan now. So I did. I brought the biggest biggest rake I could buy at Lowe's, and I mean, hopefully it'll help us. It's been one and a half feet above our rim for the last seven weeks, so hopefully it'll help us a little bit to prepare for this. We may be the only college basketball team that's going through a landscaping aisle at Lowe's to try to get us better to be a, to be a better team. But, you know, do what you can. What's the mood of the team heading into the game? Well, you'll have to ask those guys. I mean, I think they're excited. I'm excited. Uh, we understand this. Um, I think their mood's outstanding. I'll let you ask those guys that. What's the biggest question about your team you'd like an answer on with losing a draw uh, to Friday night? Well, I don't, you know, you're not going to get all the answers in one game, but uh, I think one of the biggest answers we're going to get, how do we handle adversity? You know, we're going to learn through mistakes. We're going to learn through adversity. And we're not going to play in front of a crowd of 23,500 for the entire season. So if you can go in there and handle that and handle that excitement, and I mean, guys, we, we, you know, we should live in Kentucky. I mean, we're, you know, we're 35, 40 minutes from you guys. So we get all the Big Blue Nation reports, and we got a ton of Kentucky fans here in Jackson County. So I get all the stuff. I mean, I watch Coach Cal's show. So uh, the one of the things that we have to do is how do we handle this going in there? And, uh, you know, we just uh, – we're going in there with the mindset to do the very best we can do. I've gotten a lot of advice from Coach Kill on how we do this. I mean, he's played at the Big Ten at the highest level. So what do you do when you go into the horseshoe? What do you do when you go into the roundhouse? You know, do what we do. That's, that's the only thing we're going to ask our guys to do. And, you know, hopefully about 945 on Friday night, we're going to come out of that game saying, you know what, we did a few good things here. These are improvements that we need to make. But uh, I like what I see of our young men. I know you haven't played this one yet, but how do you prepare for a team Monday after you played just two days before? I mean, have you started on Buffalo also? Yes. We started on Buffalo about three weeks ago. So, uh, uh, because, I mean, we're sitting here, and I know everybody wants to talk about this game, but when we open up on Monday night, we're going to open up against one of the best basketball teams in college athletics. I mean, ESPN wrote an article about him two weeks ago. This is the team that could go to the Final Four. So, you know, it's we're going to find out a lot about the Salukis in our first two games. And we told our players that. And But that's okay. That's okay. We, we expect it. We expect it. That's, uh, you know, that's why we put together this schedule. And, uh, you know, I, I, and Coach is right over here. But even when I went to him and asked him about the Kentucky game, he said, you've already – your schedule's already tough enough. And, uh, but we did this for a reason, to prepare us to win a conference championship. Everything that we're doing is in preparing ourselves for postseason play. That's our goal, that's our objective. So, and hopefully, the, hopefully the, it'll pay off. Time for two more. Do you feel like it'd be a good zone team? Uh, but we, we don't anticipate playing a lot of zone. Uh, I think we'll be a better defensive team this year. That's how I'll answer that question. I don't, I don't see us playing a lot of zone, but if we do, I think we'll be better because I think we're a better basketball team. Coach, do you refer back to the playing Louisville last year with your returning players at all? Well, it's unfair to do that because we were without three players last year when we played to Louisville. So, uh, uh, and we, if you remember right, we lost Armand. He had his kneecap went out on him at, Arma, uh, at Louisville. So we didn't have Teak. Uh, 
and uh, we didn't have Armand for, I mean, he played, but we didn't have him. He was the rotating knee and uh, had him out of that, and uh, we didn't have Marcus Bartley. So it's unfair to do that. But we've referenced, uh, the only thing we've referenced going into this game is doing what we do. I mean, I, I go back, guys. The worst thing I could do is put more pressure on these guys. I'm not going to do that. I'm not going to, there's enough pressure already on us going into this game. I certainly don't need to add to it. Next next Wednesday's uh, recruiting uh, signing day, Barry, what, you have two commitments. Do you, do you envision getting a, a couple of JUCOs in that class? We in, uh, No. To get older? No, no, no. I mean, do I envision it for signing day? No. We're going to sign the two kids on signing day, and uh, uh, that's it. That's right now. Thanks, Okay, guys, Appreciate thanks. It. Appreciate it. Thanks.